Good morning. I'm so glad each of you were able to get out of bed soon enough uh, that you were able to use that extra hour. Uh, you got, uh, I usually just use it to sleep. I always think uh, turning the clocks uh, back is a great idea. I think we should do it every week. Uh, but uh, as we look at the announcements, uh, is there anyone from the floor that needs to share something? Yes. Yes. Receiving the elements as soon as you receive them in the front. Very good. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Thank you for your organizing that, and thanks to each of you who helped get the word out and get a good publicity. That's a real army of women. That sounds wonderful. Uh, anything else? Yes. Next Sunday is our Friendsgiving, so I want everyone at home to hear this also. Uh, two turkeys will be provided. Everybody is to please bring a side dish. And this is what we call our Friendsgiving. Everyone and anyone is invited. There is a sign up out on the kiosk if you'd like to sign up for whatever you're bringing, but everyone is welcome. And again, Wednesday is our outreach uh, committee meeting. Also sign up for our, fr our, for our women's journey to Bethlehem. Very nice. I'm always so pleased to see how busy and active your ministries are here. Uh, if you, you don't know, I'm Pastor Larry Swaysgood, and it's a luxury to be your preacher and, and worship guide today. Uh, our next item is to, uh, for me to talk with the children. Uh, and this is right up my alley. So if the children <laughs> will come up, I'll try to blend in. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, I'll 
so glad each of you are here. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Yes. I'd like everybody to get one of these bags and, and uh, just grab one and make sure all your friends have one too. All right. Uh, today we're going to talk about Band-Aids. Uh, what is a Band-Aid? What's it used for? Anybody know? <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. What, what's a Band-Aid for? Why would you use a Band-Aid? Yeah? If you get hurt, you would need a Band-Aid. Oh, oh, that's right. Yes, if you get a boo-boo, that's when you... Use a Band-Aid. Here, we have some other people that need a little bag here. Yeah, I'm just going to set this bag over there. All right, if you need some more. Uh, bag. Now, uh, you just <laughs> uh, now, some really old people, they collect coins or uh, they have different kind of hobbies, but I'm one of those people that collect Band-Aids. Uh, and uh, yeah, right. My wife and me gives that look a lot. Why? Why would you do that? Uh, uh, well, uh, and when I'm collecting these band aids, uh, I'm finding out that there's different kinds of band aids. Did you know that? Um, I'm going to set these boxes out here. I want everybody to get. Uh, to, if you see one that you like, uh, uh, get one. And, and here's one that are flexible band aids. That uh, means that you can put it over the wound uh, more easily, if you want one of those. Now, oh, here's, here's one with cartoon characters on it. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and some people believe that if your, if your Band-Aid has a cartoon character on it, uh, it heals faster. Uh, and you want one of those? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Here, I'm going to let you put, you, everybody put in the kind of Band-Aid you want. Now, here's one that's a sheer Band-Aid. Uh, that means they're easy to see through. I don't know why you'd want that kind more than another, but uh, uh, there's that kind. Uh, and, oh, here's one that's waterproof. Uh, so you, after you put this Band-Aid on, you can take a shower or a bath and it won't come off. Uh, here's another Band-Aid here. Uh, these are just, well, you know, they have little holes poked in the side of them. I don't know, I guess that lets the air in. So if you want that, <laughs> if you don't want, just sit them down. <laughs> Here's another kind, more flexible. Oh, this one, this one is one of my favorites. Uh, this is, it stops the bleeding quicker. <laughs> so if you're really got a deep cut and uh, Blood's really gushing out. This is the kind of Band-Aid you want. Uh, anyhow, everybody get at least one Band-Aid in your little... You don't have one yet? Here, you can have one. That one has a cartoon character in it. Yeah, we're not passing these Band-Aids out very good. Here, here, just, just take one. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. This is fun. Now... <laughs> Um, now, I have a couple other questions to ask. How many of you have, ha have seen your parents or an adult wear a Band-Aid? Yeah? Yeah. Why, why would an adult need a Band-Aid? For the same reason a kid needs a Band-Aid. Yeah, yeah. Now, did, did your parents ever tell you how they get a boo-boo? Some people think that only kids can have a boo-boo, but that's not true. Adults can have a boo-boo also. Did, did your parents or adults ever tell you how they got a boo-boo? Yeah? What happened? Ooh, they got a cut. Ooh, a knife. Yeah, I, I've been known to, to misuse a utility knife, and that's not good at all. Uh, all right. Um, now, it's important. I'm sending these Band-Aids home with you because you just never know when you're going to need a Band-Aid. That's why it's important you never you never you know it's an accident you know and plans on having a boo-boo and so it's important for you to have 
this little bag of Band-Aid to come. But before we go any farther, I want to explain. Are you listening? <laughs> you listening? The, the purpose of the Band-Aid is to protect the wound from getting bumped or bruised worse or to keep more germs away. It the Band-Aid protects the wound so it heals faster. Yeah, and this is important because uh, uh, if we don't wear a Band-Aid, not only might it bleed more, but it could get worse and it could get infected with more germs. And so this Band-Aid stuff is pretty important. I'm glad for each of you to have at least one more Band-Aid. But uh, I'm telling you this also because I want you to hear this. <laughs> I want you to hear this. <laughs> that the church is like a Band-Aid. All right? Yeah, the church. <laughs> that's right. The church is like a Band-Aid because when we come to worship together, like we're doing right now, being together as Christians protects us from things getting worse. When we're in church, uh, we won't get hurt or bumped or infected with evil as easily. It's really important for you to understand that being in church helps us recover from mental boo-boos and spiritual boo-boos. And, and when we're together here, we can forgive each other and we're protected better than if we're not at church. Okay? Well, it looks like you're... You, <laughs> That's a great question. There's these itty-bitty Band-Aids, uh, and uh, the, about the only reason you'd use these Band-Aids is when your dad or grandpa, like me, uh, would cut themselves shaving. It's so very small. Uh, uh, and, uh, but uh, I've been known to wear these uh, after I shave, and, and so I'm going to keep these here. You probably don't shave very much. Okay, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say a phrase, and I'd like you to pray with me, okay? I'll say a phrase, and you repeat it. Dear Jesus, thank you for Band-Aids to protect our cuts and our wounds. Thank you for the church that protects our hearts. Being in church will help protect us and help us to get better soon. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for being up here. <laughs> wow. Now, did anybody feel some healing from that? <laughs> uh, wasn't that fun? All right. Thank you, dear. What do you know? The, con the cartoon band-aids are all gone. <laughs> What's next? Oh, I'm supposed to help with confession and forgiveness. Sounds like a pretty important thing to do. All right. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God,
rejoice and be glad, for God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. All right. We're going to sing our gathering hymn. It's for all the saints. comes that special time throughout the year that we honor the saints and we often talk about the church as a community but in our western individualized society it is sometimes hard to realize just how interrelated we are with other people our lives are intertwined with the lives of other people sometimes we're unaware of this blending whether we like to admit it or not we are social creatures. We also sometimes think that we are who we are because we have worked hard with our, uh, made it ourselves. That is, unless sometimes we do not like something about ourselves. And then it's obvious due to our traumatic experience of childhood. Yet if we are honest, much of what we are as a human being, we owe to other people. Somebody say amen. Much of what we are as humans today are because of other people, especially in the church. Most of us have fathers and mothers of faith. Sometimes those are our own parents. Sometimes there are people who are teachers, pastors, youth uh, ministers, Sunday school teachers. These people uh, are small and large ways have helped us grow and have nurtured our life and our faith. We always stand inside a large community. And this is just what happens when we're around uh, these good people day after day. For those of us who are older, many of these people have shaped us through a, a long journey. But at this time of year, on All Saints Day, we slow down to remember our parents, our, 
uh, of faith. We, we acknowledge those who have uh, been uh, especially uh, nurturing to our heart. Good morning, church family. Today is a time of recognizing and honoring those who have died this year. We will remember first those of our congregation who have left this world. And then we will remember all our loved ones who have died and entered into the kingdom of heaven over the years. Marion Grimm. Jeff Smith. And Jerry Melvin Saunders. Remember our loved ones whom we shall hold dear in our hearts and are with us in this church triumphant.
we're going to continue with the other verses of for all the saints now.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our eternal Redeemer, by the presence of your Spirit, you renew and direct our hearts. Keep always in our mind the end of all things and the day of judgment. Inspire us for a holy life here and bring us to the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading this morning is from the book of Psalms, chapter 116. A reading from the Psalms. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. We continue now with a reading from the New Testament epistle from Revelation chapter 14, 6 to 13. Then I saw another angel flying in mid heaven with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on earth in every nation, tribe, and language and people. And the angel said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of this judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of the water. Then another angel, a second one, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fortification. Then another angel, a third, Follow them, crying with a loud voice. Those who worship the beast and its image and receive the mark on its forehead or on its hands, they will also drink the wine of God's wrath, poured on mixed into the cup of his anger, and they will be tormented with fire and sulfur. They're in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. There is no rest or night for those who worship the beast or image, for anyone who receives the mark of his name. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints. Those who keep the commandments of God and hold fast to the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, blessed are the dead who are from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, and their deeds will follow them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Psalms 116, verses 12 to 15, is a call to worship God and not take our blessings for granted. We must not treat them as if they were entitled to us. This first angel calls us to not only worship God, but to worship God in public. Quote, in the presence of all his people. So when Christians gather in public worship and in unity, the fellowship is like a band-aid. It protects us from evil and hastens the healing. What's more, this text in Psalms tells us that God's children die differently than others. It says that when God's children die, God notices. 
he not only notices, but every Christian funeral is precious in God's sight. I hope at my funeral there are a large gathering of family and friends, and, and there's uh, hopefully a biblical eulogy given, and a sweet singing, followed by going to the graveside on a sunny day, of course, and, and followed by a luxurious meal in the church. It might not happen that way. Perhaps your loved ones outlived all their comrades, or perhaps COVID or bad weather prevented good attendance. I've known some people who died with no formal service at all, and the state even paid for the funeral to care for the body. But regardless of all that, know this. God is aware. The text says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Regardless of what pre-arrangements were made, God notices and calls it precious when his children die. I'd also like to remind you that the first three letters in the word funeral spell out the word fun. I've enjoyed being part of many fun funerals. Uh, and it might seem weird to other people, but it, it's fun because they died in close relationship with Jesus. Amen? Uh, raise your hand if you have ever attended a fun funeral. Boy, I, I, I have attended those and. Uh, again, it's not, well, it's not all fun. There's some sadness and supposed to be. But uh, Lord help us, it's, it's only sadness. Well, our Revelation text features three angels with three important announcements. Announcements that warn us and also give us good news. The first angel calls people to worship God. The second angel announces the fall of Babylon, which is Satan's rule on earth. This angel announces that soon enough, Satan will lose his battle for the souls of us on earth. The text makes it clear that Satan is very real. The power of evil is not merely mortals making bad choices. No, there is an actual opponent named the devil who was organizing and actively scheming against Jesus to control the hearts of humankind. We see this battle described plainly in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 when Satan directly tempts Jesus. First, Satan uh, tempts the hungry Jesus and says, why don't you turn these stones into bread? Secondly, Jesus is told that he can rule the earth and get human adoration by manipulation. He's told by Satan that Satan will share all of his power with Jesus over all the earth. All he has to do is worship Satan. The third temptation, Jesus is told to jump off a tall building and watch the heavenly angels rescue him that he's protected with special benefits and so he can just abuse those at will. The good news is that Jesus never uses his power to bless himself, but always uses his power to rescue and bless us, his children. Notice that each of these three temptations might have worked against Jesus had he had any selfish pride or if his love for humankind had wavered. In this Luke passage, Satan's scheme is thwarted each time by Jesus quoting scripture. And then it says, the devil left Jesus alone until a more opportune time. Something we would do well to copy. Whenever we're tempted, quote the scripture, cling to the truth of God's word evermore and the devil must flee until we get fall into pride and 
forget to quote scripture. Notice these three angels from Revelations give us wise advice. First, it's important to sincerely worship and adore God. Secondly, we must trust the shed blood of Jesus. And after we trust the shed blood of Jesus to rescue us from Satan's control, we must then not whine about the evil in this world, but instead trust Jesus to ultimately win this battle against our foe. Let me say it a different way. Whining does not help. <laughs> Trusting Jesus amidst the difficult situation does. The third vital message from the angel is that while we're waiting on Jesus to finally defeat Satan, our assignment is to patiently obey and trust in Jesus. Is patience one of your strong suits? Patience is especially important when we're tempted over and over again. Revelation 14, verse 12, says that the condition we live through here on earth, quote, calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints. It calls for us to obey God's commands and remain faithful. These words are an important backdrop now to verse 13. Verse 13 is the core of what every church needs to cling to whenever there's a funeral for a Christian. Maybe you've wondered, what happens when a Christian dies? And I tell you, the consequence for a Christian who dies in fellowship with Jesus is more wonderful and more glorious than I can properly explain. But I see in verse 13 three items for us to celebrate regarding the death of a Christian. So let's listen to this verse 13 again. Quote, Write this down, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor and their deeds will follow them. Our author John says, Write this down, which is to say, you can count on it. You can depend on it. You can take it to the bank. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. When Christians die, after they've trusted Jesus to win this battle against Satan, and he will win the battle, after they have patiently obeyed to the end, there is a reward. Now be clear, our obedience does not earn that reward, but there will be a reward. And that reward for daily worshiping God and being faithfully obedient is this, quote, that the dead in Christ will be blessed by God. Now if you're a sixth grader eating in the school cafeteria and the lunch lady says to you, I'm going to bless you. That, that might seem kind of nice. But what that probably means is that when you go through line, you're going to get a larger dose, a larger than average helping of sauerkraut on your salty hot dog. <laughs> My apologies if any of you have been employed, employed as the school lunch lady. But the fact remains, how we are blessed has everything to do with who is doing the blessing upon us and the authority they have over our existence. The biggest blessing we can get from the lunch lady is what she serves at lunch. But when God Almighty blesses us, there's no hold bar. We are being blessed by the God of heaven who created all of heaven and earth. We're blessed by God Almighty who is eternal. And it really gets exciting when you consider who is doing the blessing to those who die in Christ. 
if any of you like me like southern gospel music you you hear just how happy it is in heaven when you hear southern gospel music I would invite you to read Revelation chapter 20 and 21 if you want to more, know more details of what heaven is like for Christians who die in the Lord. But in light of our celebration for All Saints Day, I want you to understand that in verse 13 it says, they will rest from their labors and their deeds will follow them our text tells us here that while we will be busy in heaven there will be no more work somebody say praise the Lord <laughs> when we're in heaven there will be no more work no more physical labor for duties to produce food and shelter now there's ample Bible verses that describe the beauty of heaven and that we will be busy, the activity of heaven will be to worship Jesus. I happen to believe that there's also going to be Bible study in heaven. But even this Bible study will not be laborious. Jesus will be there with all the answers and will celebrate each answer. In addition to no work, perhaps the most important fact we need to celebrate on All Saints Sunday is this last phrase, their deeds will follow them. For each of you who have buried a Christian family member or close Christian friend, this is an important fact that will help us endure loneliness. The text says that a Christian service that they did and the prayers they said that the Christian service will continue to accomplish a holy good even after they are physically absent. John says that their deeds of trusting Jesus when life was tough, when deeds were patient and they endured, there will be this blessing that follows and perpetually pours out a divine truth on all the earth. It means that when it seemed like their Christian witness is all over, it's not over. <laughs> John says their deeds will follow them on earth. In a moment, I'm going to sing a hymn used in many funerals written by Fanny Crosby. Although blinded at the age of six, Fanny never became bitter, and she went on to live 95 years. And during those 95 years, before she died, she focused on worshiping Jesus and created more than 6,000 gospel hymns. Finally, at the age of 95, Fanny Crosby passed into glory, and with perfect vision, she saw the face of Jesus Christ. You see, though Fanny is gone from earth, her deeds, her music follows on. The name of the hymn is All the Way My Savior Leads Me. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Would you pray with me, please? Almighty God, 
we acknowledge that you are perfect both in power and in love. We acknowledge that the many blessings we enjoy today are because of your love and kindness. We sincerely thank you for the joy and protection we receive from public worship. Strengthen us that we would faithfully obey you and serve you to the very end of our days. Especially today, we praise you that through placing our faith in Jesus Christ, you graciously provide entry into paradise. Keep us vigilant in our battle against the prince of darkness who desires to sift us like wheat, who desires to abuse our foolish pride and trip us up. Remind us each morning that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Motivate us with the truth that there is most definitely an existence after our mortal bodies die. God, we would be quite glad to serve, us, to serve you wholeheartedly, just exclusively to enter into heaven, to meet Jesus face to face. But the Bible tells us clearly that our deeds will follow us, that our existence in the afterlife is blessed and enriched because of our faithful abiding in Christ. We give you worship and thanks that our beloved family and friends who have died in Christ have a sacred legacy that continues on. That their Christian witness will guide everyone who pays attention to history. Inspire us to so radically live for Christ that our comrades who live with us now will recognize the blessing God gives to his children. We pray to all this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beyond the Sunset is a beautiful hymn that Pastor Larry suggested we sing this morning. So let's stand and sing it. If it is unfamiliar to you, just feel free to listen on the first verse and join in on the second and the following verses. <laughs>
let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. And together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. God of time and space, our faith has been passed down through the generations. Bless new believers, catechumens, and any affirming their faith in you, that they may share what they have first received. Lord, in your mercy. God of tempest and tide, our world is full of dazzling beauty and brutal destruction. Protect us and all your creatures from hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and fires. Restore what has been lost. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, raise up leaders with integrity, honesty, and compassion. Unite our elected officials in shared goals that benefit and serve all people. Instill in them hearts of justice, mercy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of tumult, you sustain and guide your people when the way forward is uncertain. Abide with all going through transitions at work, school, or in their personal lives. Bring healing to those who are sick. Reassure us of your constancy in the midst of change. Lord, in your mercy. God of togetherness, deepen the relationships that are built in this place. Form us as a community where tears of sorrow and shouts of joy can both be shared. Lord, in your mercy. God of tenderness, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith, for Marion Grimm, Jeff Smith, and Jerry Saunders. Console our mourning spirits with the promise of eternal life in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, accept these prayers, gracious God, and, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have the offering. As you have entrusted us with all that you have created, now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst 
for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Supper, he took. 
Go in peace. Be a blessing to the world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. We collect them. <laughs>